In this video, let me show you how to create a log ingestion pipeline for your serverless applications. Now imagine we have a Lambda function and this Lambda function may be triggered through an API gateway or maybe this is a worker Lambda for a SQS queue or whatever really. There is some logic running inside these Lambda functions when it is invoked. So let's imagine we want to log some data from this Lambda function to CloudWatch so that we can later inspect this data. For example, this data could be some error logs or some uh, state information that we want to observe in terms of uh, monitoring and troubleshooting. So in AWS, we have CloudWatch, which is the centralized uh, log service. And there's a direct connection between Lambda and CloudWatch. So whenever we use console log from a Lambda function, it connects to CloudWatch and create a log group and then it uh, stream the logs to CloudWatch log. CloudWatch allows us to retain this data uh, indefinitely, but there's also a cost involved in it. For example, if I quickly go to uh, CloudWatch pricing, you can have a look in the free tier, you know, 5 GB of data ingestion archival are free, but uh, when you move to the paid tier, then there's this archival cost that is uh, $0.03 per GB. But imagine we are storing data indefinitely. And in that case, uh, you are going to increase your archival cost. So that's why we don't want to uh, store our data in CloudWatch indefinitely, but we will have an expiration time. And after that, we will stream that logs into an S3 bucket. So once we have the data in S3 bucket, First, the cost is getting reduced, and then we can uh, use lifecycle policies to move it over to even low cost destinations like Glacier, even uh, Glacier Deep Archive, and so on. Apart from that, we can use other services like Athena and uh, Glue Data Catalog to catalog this data and query the data using SQL as well. So in this lesson, I will show you how can we implement this type of an architecture. We are not going to use Athena to uh, query the data, but I will show you how to implement the rest of the architecture where whenever a log is uh, added to the CloudWatch, how can we use a subscription filter or a metric filter to stream that log through a Kinesis Firehose that uh, land the logs into S3 bucket? And then how can we configure a lifecycle policy to uh, send this uh, data into even cheap archives after a certain number of days? Let's get started on the implementation. I will first go to AWS Lambda. We need to create a Lambda function. And I'll create a Lambda function from scratch. Author from scratch. Let's give it a name. Logging function. And I'll leave the rest as default and I'll create the empty function. Now there's a little bit of a boilerplate code which is nothing but uh, returning the response and we'll add some uh, logging here so as I previously mentioned we can just do console.log now let's imagine we want to log some error so I'll create a uh, error variable and let's say this is a object and let's add an attribute called type attribute here and let's say this is the type of the error and I'll call it critical and then the message, this is the error message. I'll add a message called maybe too many DB connections. Now, apart from this, we can add the context, track trace, you know, whatever the attributes that we want to log in with our error. And then we'll uh, log this error. And we can do console log error like that, or else uh, we can just first do json.stringify and we'll do the stringify and after that uh, we'll log the error and i'll deploy it okay so let's test it save the test event and then click test again now i shoot the error message uh, on the aws lambda console itself now this uh, pulled from the cloudwatch so if we go to CloudWatch, we should see the same message. Now let me show you. I will go to the monitor section. 
and click view logs in CloudWatch. Now when we create a Lambda function, CloudWatch create a log group for that particular Lambda function and then stream any logs from that Lambda function. Let me show you that. So can you see the log group is goes uh, uh, slash AWS Lambda logging function, the function name, and these are the log streams. So I can see one log stream already, and that is nothing but our uh, console log. Okay, so now we have our Lambda function logging to our CloudWatch logs. Then let's stream that logs into a Kinesis Firehose. So how can we do that? In the CloudWatch log, I'll go back to the CloudWatch function here. Now this is the CloudWatch log group for the function. I'll click action and then I'll select subscription filters. And after that, I'm going to create a Kinesis Firehose subscription filter. Now these subscription filters get applied on the log streams and uh, we can create a filter pattern and then the output can be sent e either into a Lambda function or Kinesis or Kinesis Firehose and even we can send it to Amazon OpenSearch which is Elasticsearch service as well and then you can have Kibana dashboard and so on. But we wanted to send it to a S3 bucket so we do that through Kinesis Firehose subscription filter. So let's select that. And we are going to create the Firehose destination in this account. So let's select current account. And here I can select the Firehose stream, but I don't have one created right now. So let's go ahead and create one. So I'll search for Firehose. And that is in the Kinesis service. So let's open it in a new tab. And here I'm going to create a data Firehose delivery stream. So here I have to pick the source and the destination of this Firehose. So as the source, I will select direct put because our CloudWatch is going to write directly into this uh, Firehose stream. And the destination, we are going to send it to an S3 bucket. Now there are other destinations like Redshift, S3, and third-party Datadog service and so on. I'll select S3. We'll give it a name. Logging Firehose. If I scroll up a little bit and see how it happens, it's like when the data is streamed or the ingested into the Firehose, we can transform it optionally. In order to transform, we can have a Lambda function and then we load into the destination. But we're not going to add any transformation. I'll disable it. And I can also convert the data format into a more searchable data format. For example, right now we are logging the JSON data. Now Apache Parquet is one of the format that is more efficient with uh, queries. Because uh, if you are planning to do queries with Athena, I suggest you uh, convert the JSON format to Apache Parquet. So you can just enable it and then select Apache Parquet. I'm not going to do that. We'll just keep it as it is because we are not going to attach any Athena service here right now. And then we can set the destination settings. Now a destination is S3 bucket. First, we need to uh, select the S3 bucket. Right now I don't have one, so let's go ahead and create one. We need to give a unique name, logging S3 bucket, double eight, double eight. Hope this is unique. And then I'll leave the rest of the configuration as it is and create the bucket. It should not contain capital, so let's keep it simple, everything, and create bucket again. This time it's created. I'll search for it, logging S3 bucket, double eight, double eight. Okay, coming back to the fire hose, and then let's browse that bucket. I'll do a refresh here. There we go. Got to wait until the loading is complete so I can select. All right, select it, choose. And now this is important. We need to select the compression and the encryption type. 
Right now, the default is disabled, but if you select disabled, you will see some binary data format. So instead, I'll select gzip as my compression type, and I'm not going to use any encryption. So we'll do gzip compression. That should be that, and I'll create the delivery stream. It's created. So let's go back to the CloudWatch, and let's do a refresh here. Now I can see my logging firehose. So let's select that. And this is very important. We need to grant permission so that our CloudWatch can put the data into the firehose delivery stream. So we need to create a new role. So let's select that. Well, it's taking me to the documentation, but uh, I'll search IAM. Open in a new tab. Now I'll go to the role section and create a new role. Trusted entity type is service. And we are going to allow a service to call upon another service. So we'll select AWS service. We can either select different services like CloudWatch. But here I don't see the CloudWatch logs directly. So I'll just select EC2 and change that uh, separately. Click next. And the permission I need to provide is the uh, firehose. Let's see if I have a managed policy. Yeah, I have this kind of firehose full access. So let's select that. So that's the permission I'm attaching to this role. Click next. And let's call it CloudWatch logging role. Allow CloudWatch to call AWS Firehose. Now this is again a very important thing, otherwise you will get an error. This is a trusted policy. So every IAM role has a trusted policy. So trusted policy governs which service can assume this role. So right now this role can only be assumed by EC2 because we select EC2 earlier. Now, in order for our CloudWatch to assume this service, we need to change this to logs.amazonaws.com. So let's edit that once we create this role. So I'll go ahead and create this role first. Role is created. I can click view role. So this is the role we just created. Now let's select trust relationships. And this is the same trust relationship we saw earlier. So let's click Edit Trust Policy. And here we need to change to logs.amazonaws.com. So CloudWatch can properly assume this role. If you don't do that, you'll get an error. And that error is not very helpful too. And by the way, there's a link. And this is a gist in GitHub which contain all the uh, service principles because these are very difficult to find as well in AWS. And I think this is a good resource. I'll uh, put the link in the resource section as well. Otherwise, you have to go to the documentation and uh, you know look for it particularly. So now if I search for logs.amazonaws, uh, I should see the service principle I just attached. So now, Let's use this role and attach it here. I'll refresh it. It should be CloudWatch logging role. And now we need to create the subscription filter. So the format of the logs is JSON because we are printing a JSON payload. And we need to give a subscription filter pattern. So here we'll write a subscription filter pattern like uh, so dollar dot type because we have a type attribute and the type attribute value is critical and give it a name as well critical logs filter and let's test that filter pattern with the log stream that we have already so this is the log stream and as you can remember we logged this object which include type attribute called critical and the message and any other attribute you would like. So we are filtering 
the type attribute equal to critical. So let's test this pattern and if let's see if there's a match. Yes, there's a match. Very good. And now I'll click start streaming. There we go. Now our filter pattern is created. Now our subscription filter is created and this subscription filter is uh, sending the logs that matches this filter pattern to the firehose. And from firehose, we are sending it to the S3 bucket. So we implemented up to this stage. Now we can test this. Now before we test this, I need to change one configuration so we can easily find the logs in S3 quickly. So what is that? Let me go to the firehose. This is the firehose that we created. And I'll click configuration. And there's a configuration under this buffer hints. Now there are two attributes, buffer size and the buffer interval. When Firefox is sending data to the destination, it always create a buffer and then only send it to the destination. And this is not real time. So there are two configurations. One is the buffer size and the buffer interval. So these two determines if the buffer size is larger than 5 megabits, then Firehose will uh, push that change to the destination. Or else, if the buffer interval is greater than 300 seconds, then again it will send it to the uh, destination. So whichever one of these values meet first, it will send it to the destination. So in this case, I'm going to change the buffer interval to the minimum value because uh, we don't see uh, our logs getting more than 1 megabit. So because the minimum is 1 megabit. And here we'll set the minimum time interval, which is 60 seconds. And after that, I'll save the changes. So what does that mean is whenever our Lambda function create a log in the CloudWatch and then that log will be streamed to the Kinesis Firehose. And after one minute time, it will be added to the S3 bucket. So let's test this. I'll go into the Lambda function. So this is my Lambda function. In the code section, I'll click test again. That should run my Lambda function one more time. Here we go. And in the CloudWatch, I should see the log stream. I'll go to the log stream. Here we go. This is my latest log stream. And now if I go to the S3 bucket and do a refresh, it's nearly one minute pass. So now I see the data popping up here. So we have folder call 2022 and the month that is 06 and the date. And inside this, I will see my logging firehose function log. You can select this, download and open it. I can see the log message. However, this is not the message that we printed through. Uh, this is, I think, one of the test log, checking the health of the destination. Wait and see if our new data is also arrived. I'll do a refresh here. There we go. I see the latest one here. Okay, this is the latest one, I think. Yeah, I'll download that and let's see. Open it. And here we go. So this is our data. So we have the information like the log group, which is our AWS logging function and the log stream name and the subscription filter that it matched and also the log events. So log events includes our message. Too many database connection with the type critical. Great. Next, let's handle the expiration of these logs. First, I need to remove this indefinite uh, data retention in the CloudWatch. And also, I want to create a lifecycle policy so that the data can be moved over to Glacier or even Glacier Deep Archive. First, I will go to CloudWatch. Now, I'll go to my logging function log group. And here in the action, I'll select edit retention settings. So right now it is set to never expire by default. Let's select that. I'll keep it one week. 
So after one week, this will be permanently deleted. Save. So during this one week, if I get any data stream or the log stream from Lambda function with the critical log data, that will be sent to our S3 bucket. And after one week, this will be deleted. Still, our S3 bucket will have that information. So now in the S3 bucket, let's create a lifecycle policy. So I'm in the logging S3 bucket and then I'll select management and I'm going to create a lifecycle rule. So let's click create lifecycle rule and I'll call it logging archive lifecycle rule. And I'm going to apply to all the objects in the bucket. Acknowledge. And the lifecycle rule action is move current version of the objects between storage classes. So all the current versions of these three objects will be moved to a different storage. So which storage am I moving it? So here I can set the transition uh, storage class. So here you can choose the storage class that we want to move over. I can either it could be standard info, infrequent access, intelligent tiering, one zone IA, glacier instance retrieval, flexible retrieval, deep archive. So before you make the decision, you can learn more about it. If you click this link, it will take you to this pricing page and then you will see this request and data retrieval tab and there, you will see these different types of uh, storage classes and how much you are getting charged, particularly lifecycle transition into per thousand request. If it is a Glacier instant retrieval, so you will only charge this much. And here in the storage tab, you will see the pricing related to these uh, different storage classes. For example, for Glacier instance retrieval, you will only be paying $0.004 per gigabyte, but you can instantly retrieve these files as well. I'm going to choose that. So I'll select Glacier Instance Retrieval. And after, let's say, 30 days, I will move my files over to Glacier Instance Retrieval. All right, and I'll create the rule. Now the lifecycle rule is active. So with that, we've completed the implementation. So our Lambda functions will log the data into CloudWatch and the critical logs will be streamed through Kinesis Firehose into S3. And after 30 days, it will be sent to Glacier Instance Archive. Now that's the end of this video.